Hi, in this video, we'll be going over how to create this branching system, which I've shared before, but I've never gone over all of the full steps as to how to get this done. Um, we have all of these parameters that we can play with. And at the end, we turn those into pipes and create a pattern of polygons at the end. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So to start, I'll be using units inches and we'll create a point. Now I'll bring this one in as well as construct point. And we can plug this into here. And this will give us our initial point where the entire branching system starts from. So we start with the trunk here and we're just going to move this point vertically. So we'll bring in our unit Z and we can plug in a value using a slider. Let's just say here, Sixty. Okay. Now let's connect it with a line. So we'll bring in a line component and we'll start at the base point and we'll plug it into the end point. The next thing that we need is a construction plane that will be created at this endpoint. So we'll go to vector, plane, plane normal. And we'll plug in the geometry, which is going to be our point. And for the Z axis, we'll plug in the line. The next thing we'll do is we'll have to move this plane up or perpendicular to this own plane. So this is where we start creating our first branch and we'll move this plane using amplitude. So referencing that same plane, we can use that vector to, ex to move that plane. So let's plug that in. And now we can, for the amplitude, we can plug in a value. So here, let's go to 24. Awesome. So now we can move this up and down. Now to create a branch, we have to go from one point to more than one point. For this, we'll go to a circle. And the circle will start at this plane. And now we can give this a value for our virtual, for the size of how wide it's going to branch out. So I'm not labeling these right now, but we'll, at the end, I can kind of clean some of that stuff up. Just copy this down here and use this as our slider. Now it can get really large. So we, you can create a custom slider here by saying one, then less than, let's say, uh, 36. So we can have a custom slider. As you can see, what we need to do now is cre um, create points along this circle. So let's divide it using divide curve. And there's actually other ways of dividing this. Uh, let's just plug this one for now. And by automatically, it's going to give us 10. So let's change that to like six. Cool. So you'll see now how the branching system works. We're going to go from all of these points down to this single point, which is actually back here. So now let's go to a line and we'll plug in our points for our end value and we'll plug in the start points as our point that we moved up from the ground. So we move this up here. This is the point that we're using. 
So this is the first branch system here, and we can change the size of that. We can also change the spread of this. And if we hide the circle, you see how it all kind of starts here. Now, the reason why I said that there's different ways of doing this, and there's also a component called populate 3D or populate geometry. And we can populate this circle with a bunch of points. And it's actually giving us a hundred. So we actually, let's reduce that and just copy this down here. And as you can see, this will actually give you random points along a circle that would work in the same way, but it's more randomized. And you can also, you know, bring in a seed value, let's say a five, and this will give you more value, more random values with the same number. So it's up to you what you would want to use. I, I've never really done it with the random one, but I just want to keep it simple and show you kind of the alternatives as well as um, kind of keeping it simple for, for the example. So let's delete this. So as you can see, we have this plane here. Let's disable preview. And I can spend the time here and kind of label these because it, it kind of does get a little bit complicated once we go down, um, down the branch system. Um, but for now, we'll move on to the next portion, which is to actually create the planes here. And how do we do that? Well, we know that if we take this component, we can put it at the end here and use this line as a reference for our plane. So let's go to this component, plane normal. We'll use our lines as our axis. And our origin is going to be these endpoints. So all we're going to do is the same thing, but now it's uh, what uh, whatever amount of divisions is going to do it for that. So let's keep it simple. Let's just do one. So if we take this one and we do another branch, so we're going to move this plane relative to this own plane. Same thing that we did here. So we can technically copy this and use this plane. And it's going to move this plane relative to this plane. So we do have to plug in both of those. Now, all it did is it moved this out a certain amount. Now we need to create a circle here and do the same thing that we did here. So we'll bring these points, copy them over. So I slide it over here and then do alt and it just makes a quick copy. Now we can do the same thing. Plug in this plane for this one. Now we have one point and this point is going to be our next branch, but now we can actually do a few more for this one. And we can go from this point to this branch. So let's go to, let's actually add one more of these. And there's also, there's a few things here that kind of gets a little bit tricky. So let's go to a line component. And we'll, we know that these are going to be the endpoints. Now the start point, that's where we plug in both of these. And this is where graft comes into play. So it's not going to work because it's going to organize. It has the information here organized in groups. And this one doesn't have it in organized in groups. So what I do have to say is here, just go to graft and that'll fix that issue. So let's go here, have add more branches, change the size of the branching. And this is actually the, you just do the same thing over and over again to get, create more branches and smaller branches. Um, this is going to be kind of the end of the tutorial in the sense that 
I'm not going to create more branches, but I'll show you the things that you can do with these curves. So we'll bring in three curve components. We'll bring this one, copy another one, and copy another one. We'll plug in this as our last branch. We'll plug in our these lines as our second one. And let's bring in our last set, which is the original stem. And I'll disable the preview on all of this. And we can pick three different sizes for this. So um, when you look in nature, typically the trunk is going to be the widest and it gets narrower as it goes to the edges. So I'll go to pipe and create a pipe that has round caps. And I'll just go for the radius 6.5. And I can pick a different radius for each one if I want to. So I'll make a copy here and use this, these curves. We can use the same value for all of them. Or we can use a, um, I like to use a factor or a, um, make the number smaller as they get towards the end here. So I'll do a division. And I'll bring in a number. So I like to do 1.618. That will make this one smaller. And then we take this and we copy it again. And then we plug in this value and then this value in here. So all it does and let's clean this up a little bit. All it, all it, this is doing is creating a factor that makes it smaller. You could also make it larger, right? So this is making this one, this is twice as small, this is twice as small. One point six one eight, and we also have the endpoints, which will be these. And for those, um, in a video that I have where, where I have an optimized script, this is where I have a sphere. But with this one, I would actually, uh, if you have the ability to bring in something like, if you go to mesh. And we go to polyhedron. We can use, let's see here, and scale. Yeah, it's not doing that one, but let's see if it does bring in a icosphere. So if we do phase borders or phase boundaries, and then do uh, boundary surfaces, we can actually get that mesh into a B rep. And we can change the density with the scale. We'll actually leave it there. And the scale, it's actually going to be the size. And all of these sliders are still very much live where we can go to our sliders and change our angles. 
can change our sizing here. Lastly, I do want to ch uh, change the size of this to make it random. Um, to do that, we can bring in a random component. We can also bring in a construct. Construct domain. We can say from nine. So let's copy this one. And we'll do a large number and a small number. Well, it's too big. Now, number, that's how many points. So we'll actually plug in the number of points that we have here. We need to figure out how many. So for this, we'll go to list, length. And when we plug in all of those points and I flatten it, it'll output the number of values. And that's actually the same number of values that I need for my number. And I can plug in this into the scale. And now we have, if we graph, actually, if we flatten this, and then we flatten this one, now we have the ability to pick the small number and the large number just to kind of randomize it a little bit and if you want to change the result we can just go to two and bring in more uh random changes if you don't like the way that this is um all the same we can randomize a rotation but for now i think this is kind of the conclusion of the tutorial I showed you how to start with a stem, branch it out into separate branches, and at the end, um, creating a random sized polygon at the end. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll have this script in the video script section of my website. Um, thank you for watching. Leave the comments and what you think about this below, and I hope you see you next time.